Welcome to our Clinked 101 on subgroups. Uh, subgroups is a recent feature that we've added to the platform, and it's really a feature that is being utilized by our clients for really administrative purposes. Um, so it is for account admins as well as group admins to be able to take advantage of, to be able to share content from uh, a main group into subgroups. And we'll go into that into more detail throughout this session. So just to kick things off, meet our team. You are here today with me, uh, Sarah Broderick, and our agenda for the day is to go through what are subgroups, how to create a scrub group, the additional settings that you can uh, adjust as well within configurations, go through a use case example, and then talk about our resources. At the very end, we'll follow up with a Q&A session as we always do. And with that, we're going to kick off. Um, just to note, with the Q&A side of things, um, if you are going to, if you have any comments uh, that you'd like to be able to add prior to the Q&A, if anything jogs your, your memory or, or pops into your mind as I'm talking, please feel free to add it into the chat. And then when we get to the q and I'll go through the chat, but also during the q and I will ask people to unmute themselves. So now, without further ado, we will kick off. Subgroups. So what are subgroups? You heard me say at the very beginning, um, just to set some context, subgroups really are a tool to be able to share content. Uh, it is a way to be able to, from an administrative perspective, be able to set up a main group that then has shared groups. That main group is where you will actually share content down to the subgroups. And so with setting up the subgroups, you always want to start by thinking about where would I want to host the initial data, the, the content itself, and the content types could be files, notes, discussions, events, and tasks, all of the different tools that we have within Clinked. So you really want to think about what is that main group that I want to be putting that initial content, and then how do I want it to be sharing down into the subgroups. And so just to be able to keep that in mind, we're going to just show you here on the screen a little bit of a preview about what the view would be like for a group admin to be able to see the subgroup area. So in this case, we are looking at a environment which is called Budx Clients. And Budx has a group in here, which is a main group. It's A2 English Lit. The way we know that that is a main group that has subgroups is for account admins and group admins. They'll be able to see here in the right-hand corner where the arrow is pointing to the icon, which is subgroups. When you actually see that, that means there are subgroups associated with this, with this group. And so the content that is shared across the different tools will be able to be shared down into those subgroups. Now, just so you don't have any concerns, going from the subgroups up is not the way that this works. It's a one-way transfer from the main group down to the subgroups. So how would we know what subgroups there are? In this case, we're just going to click through. And you can see here, when you click onto the tab itself, it does bring you to the subgroups and it lists out who the subgroups are. Now, some of these names might be familiar to you. They are actually the subjects or they are the students of the A2 English Lit class that Budx is running on behalf of a client. So how do you actually go about setting up a subgroup? Well, there's two different ways to set up subgroups. You can do it initially upon creating a group or you can actually change an existing group to be a subgroup. So we're going to go through initially just how you create a, when creating a group, how to actually set up that subgroup. So we're now in a new environment. So this is peak compliance. Peak compliance needs to set up a new client. And in doing so, they have a main group that they want to be able to associate a subgroup to. So that main group is where content's going to be put. And then that data is going to go down into the subgroups themselves. In this case, they'll enter in the client's name. They'll also check the box here for uh, this is a subgroup of, and then to be able to assign the subgroup, they will hit click to select. Upon doing that, you'll see a list of all of the different main groups that could be chosen from. In this case, they're going to just select Smith and Sons contractors and then hit select. Upon doing that, the association is done. The main group will be Smith and Son contractors, and the subgroup will be this new one that's being created. All the content that is put into Smith and Son contractors will then go down automatically into that subgroup. Now, what if you already have groups in your Clinked account and you want to make them a subgroup of a main group? It's a great question, and that's what we're going to go through next. So, in this case, East Anglian Electrical is an existing group. In this case, it is we want to actually change it. So it is also a subgroup of the group we've just talk, talked about a moment ago. So for an account admin, you can come in here into the group settings. So this is an account admin or a group admin. You can come into the group area. So you're in the group of 
East Anglian Electrical. And in the settings area, just as you normally would be able to be able to change your say name, the appearance, tools, uh, as well as notifications and other advanced features, you also now have this option here, which is this is a subgroup of, just check that box, click, the, click to select, and that will navigate you to the screen we just saw a moment ago. And again, we would choose Smith and Sons Contractors, and then we would hit select. Upon doing that, the association will take place. Now, what kind of data is it that's going back and forth? We already said it's going to be content that's being shared. How that content's being shared is going to depend upon the additional settings. Now, when you Create a, create a subgroup just by going through what we just did, either with new subgroup or by assigning an existing group to be a subgroup. There are out of the box settings that are done by a default. Let's go through what that actually looks like. Now, just to note, you don't have to make any changes to this. Uh, you can keep it just as it is, and that will, be, um, that will be the way the content works, but let's just go through it. And if for some reason you wanna be able to adjust it for any reasons, you most certainly can by going through these steps. So to be able to see the additional settings, Again, we're going to come back to the new client screen. This would be the same thing for an existing group. You're going to come into the area where that box was that you wanted to check off and then the click to select. And after you've done the click to select or before, you, there, there's a cog that will be here to the right. You notice before that cog actually wasn't there. You do need to um, migrate your mouse over it to unveil it. And then once you do, when you click on it, you'll actually be able to see the configuration area. So this window will pop up. And as you can see here, it does list all of the different tools that you have. It by default comes up where all of the tools are enabled. And then also when to be able to control how the content is coming down from the main group to the subgroups, you have different options. So by default, you have create, update, and delete. What does that mean? In the main group, when you add a new file, let's just say for example, it will create that file inside of the subgroup. If you then make an update to that file, it will then also update the file that's in the subgroup. And same thing, if you delete it in the main group, it will also be deleted in the subgroup. You have other choices, which is to create an update, create and delete, or create only. And so in that regard, you can change all of these features to, or all of these different configuration settings based upon what you want the subgroups to be receiving from that main group. So just again, to be able to reiterate this, you do not have to go into configurations. It is automatically set up so that all of the tools are enabled. And in each case, it is actually set up for the changes to be create, update, and delete. However, you can make these changes if you want to on your side, depending upon what it is you'd like to do. And then you can hit update and that automatically sets your group. So next up, we're gonna go through an example. We are gonna go through a bit, we're going to actually go back to the example we were talking about at the very beginning. So again, we're in BudX. We're working on BudX's main group, which has been set up as the class that we talked about beforehand, the course in this case. And the subgroups of this course are actually the students. So this is the main group that's been set up. And then through subgroup settings and assignments, we've set up all three of these groups so that they are actually content receivers. So those are the subgroups and they will receive content across all tool types utilizing the um, setting by default. So that will be to create, update, as well as delete. So in this case, if we were to go into, say, the main group, so that course group itself, you can see here, you've got the subgroups area. If you were to click into that, you see the list, and we'll go through that in just a moment. Now, just to talk through the use case itself, this is a link, or this is a, this is a program, it is a course itself, so there's an educational component to this. So some of the things that might want to be shared down is the welcome note. So the welcome note itself sits into the notes area. This actually might be updated by an instructor to include things such as a link to the class's Zoom meetings. In that case, if you actually edited the um, note here, this note would then be um, updated in each of the groups, the subgroups below. In addition to that, if there was course materials that was being added into the files area, and that was to be shared down into each of the students groups, it would again be shared down as through the create, update, or the delete process if you need to delete a file as well. You can also utilize discussions if you want to in the individual settings, or you can also use events, which in this case would likely be uh, a course schedule. Uh, maybe it's when the classes are meeting and it would include say things like the Zoom meetings or Google Meet meetings, depending upon how it is the, the group is actually working together. 
Now with that, if we were to select into the subgroups, you will see uh, just the list of all of the subgroups. If you wanted to go into them individually, you could click into each of the names of the groups, or you can always navigate into the dashboard area or client list to be able to see it. But in this case, just for, for clarity, um, when we're adding the files that go into the course, uh, the course group, each of these groups, so Ross, Phoebe, and Rachel, who you might all know who really likes some coffee in New York, uh, they would all be receiving the files that were saved or that were put into the course material. And potentially while they're sitting together doing their work, they would all receive the content itself into their individual groups for them to be able to do their work. Now, just to reiterate, the work that they're doing, if they're submitting information into a content into, say, the files area of their own group, that information that's in their group would not be carried up into the English lit area, uh, the actual uh, main group itself. So with that, uh, we have gone through everything that I wanted to go through with subgroups. There is some, uh, some additional things for you to be able to consider. Uh, at Clinked, we really wanna make sure that you are as self-sufficient as possible. Um, as you know, being a, a user of Clinked, uh, it is a very user-friendly platform uh, from an administrator perspective, as well as an end user perspective. So some of the resources I just wanna flag up for you that we've been working hard to be able to make sure are very thorough are our help in Clinked. So inside of Clinked itself, you are able to access our help center. So in this case, again, I'm back in Budex. I'm actually logged in as a different member. So this is as Evelyn. Now, if Evelyn wanted to go to the help center within Clinked, all she has to do is hit that drop down arrow to the right of her name. And upon doing that, she can find the help center. This help center is where you can find all sorts of articles and documentation, one of which in, is included as uh, the subgroups article, which our team recently put together to be able to go through everything I've just talked about, as well as additional details. If she was to click onto the help center um, or the help button here, she's able to be navigated into that area. She can use our, our um, different areas that will be able to help you with either getting up and running fast, collaborating together, managing Clinked, all sorts of different topics. Or you can easily use the search bar just to type in something like subgroups and then the article itself will pop up. Now, just a note, a group or account admins have the right to be able to actually remove the help as well as the features feature request area here. Um, the reason why that's important is because Clinked is a white labeled tool. And so because of that, you might not want your clients to know that it's actually a Clinked tool. And so therefore you wanna remove anything that would be Clinked, which includes our help center as well as our feature request area. Uh, what we have done is we've actually made it so that if your account manager or account, yeah, account admin has actually turned off those two features, you still have the ability to access our help center. And we will actually be adding a link to the feature request area inside of a new space within our website. So if you go to clink.com, you are actually able to access our new help and learning center. This was rolled out about two months ago. If you come here to the resources area and click onto that, in the drop down, you can see here, there's the help and learning center. If you click onto that, you can see here, you can immediately access our help center. So just type in subgroups, hit enter, you'll get into our, into our help center and access everything that you need. In addition, we always put all of our, our what we call Zoominars. So that's the webinar you're on right now. Uh, so you'll be able to go there to be able to access that and, and listen to any of our past articles or Zoominars. Uh, also, we're gonna be putting a link down here to be able to access our feature request area as well. So you immediately have access to be able to go into our feature request section or our public roadmap. Speaking of Zoominars slash webinars, um, we really encourage everyone to be able to go to our uh, Clinked YouTube channel. This is where you can find lots of videos that we have. Um, this, this video will actually be posted there tomorrow morning. So if anybody's missed this, if I've gone too fast for anybody, uh, you'll be able to go right in here to be able to listen to this session as well as any of our past sessions. So you can see here, we've got our, our Q3 feature releases uh, webinar that we did a few weeks ago, as well as a deep dive into notifications. Outside of that, uh, you can always drop us an email. So you can always drop our support team an email at support at clink.com. And we'll be very happy to be able to answer any of the questions that you have on your side. So with that, I just like to go into the Q&A section. So if anybody has any questions, uh, please feel free to send us a note or unmute yourself and add, add your comments in now. I feel like I might've went through that a little bit fast. So let me know. <laughs> Let me know if you want any kind of uh, refresher on things too. Uh, that, from my point of view, that's really good, thank you. 
Um, I don't think it's something that we would utilize now that I've seen how it works, but it's good to know that it's there. Great. Yeah. Thank you for the feedback, Susan. And yeah, it's, it's definitely, it's, it's something for you to, to test in the future, even if it's, you know, one feature area that you want to play around with and, um, or if it's the notes specifically, um, I'm glad that, I'm glad that's helpful for you to be able to understand what the, what the feature is. Can I ask a slightly unrelated question? Uh, sure. Yeah. I'll see you if I can. You mentioned about the help, um, being able to be switched on and switched off. Yes. Um, is it possible um, for future that you might be able to switch that off per member? So, for example, I'd like it available to everybody that works at Pico, but I don't want it to our customers. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, can I ask you, Susan, if you could put that into our feature request uh, yeah. section? Um, that That's a really good piece of feedback. Uh, we have been looking to do a bit more about advanced permissioning in the future. Um, and so we need to understand a bit more about what clients are looking for. So I feel like that could be one of one of those uh, advanced features that or advanced permissions that we could do based upon, say, roles. Um, so it could yeah. be internal team, external. So yeah, if you could add that, that would be fantastic. Will do. Great. So we have one question that's come across on the uh, on the chat line. Um, it is, can I turn current group into a subgroup? Yes, you can. Um, so I, I know you came in just a little bit late. So we will repost this video for everyone and share it tomorrow via social media. Um, but just so you know, yes, you can. So if you go into a current group and you want to actually make it a subgroup of a main group, so you, you know, one of your other groups, um, all you do as an account <clears throat> admin or a group admin is go into your your um, group settings. And then in there, you are actually able to check the box that says um, make a subgroup of, and then you select which group you want to have as your main group. Um, so yeah, if you've set up groups already and you want to be able to go through that, you are very welcome to do that. Great. I'm glad that that was helpful. Does anyone else have any questions? Well, if you do come up with any questions that you want to be able to discuss later, um, please drop us an email. So it's just um, support at clink.com. Uh, yeah, actually, so we did get one question that came across, which was, uh, do you have any roadmap for future features? Yes, we do. Um, in the same area that we I showed you a moment ago about where you can go to the help section within Clink, there is a section just below it, which is called feature request. If you click onto that, that will actually navigate you to our public roadmap. And within there, you can actually look to see what other feature requests have come in. Um, you can vote for the ones that you like. I think it's just an upvote or a downvote. Uh, and in addition to that, you can submit your own requests or there is a roadmap section as well. So you'd be able to actually look to see uh, what we have planned up, uh, what we're currently working on um, to be able to, to keep in the loop. So please, uh, please go into that. The way you do that is just go up to your, when you're logged into Clinked on the top right corner, you'll see your name in the drop down menu. You, just go down to where it says feature requests and that will navigate you directly into our roadmap so you'll be able to access that can you get to, the, to that via your website because i've actually got all of those things switched off yeah that's a great question you know what i'll do i'll, I'll make sure that it's actually on the help and learning center um, I'll, I'll put in for a request on that so that we can get that in um, so you'll be able to access it from there great thank you yeah, of course. Great. Yeah, that's a that's a good that's a good uh, a good thing to, for us to add in case people do shred it off, um, which is <laughs> ideal. So thank you. <laughs> okay, great. Well, um, I think with that, it sounds like we we might not have many many more questions. Um, but if anybody does have questions and you want you want to send them across to our team, as I said, if you just email us at support at clink.com. Um, we'll be able to take any questions that you have. Also, you can always go to the help section. Um, and if you type in subgroups, you'll be able to find an article that our team's put together on the topic as well. And with that, I just have to say thank you from all of us at Clinked. Uh, we really appreciate you joining our webinars. Hope you're getting um, as much as you can out of the sessions and enjoying them as well. I know we, we enjoy putting them together uh, and hearing from everybody throughout, throughout the sessions as well as posts. So thank you very much and hope you all have a great day.